Greetings everyone, I'm Adam Harriton, and in this video I'm going to discuss how I deal with ticks and how I'm able to comfortably spend so much time outside in a state, Pennsylvania, that has one of the highest rates of Lyme disease in the nation. The reason I decided to film a video on ticks is because it's probably the most requested video that I haven't done. But rather than tell you what you should do and how you should deal with ticks, I'm only going to tell you what I do based on my experiences living in prime tick territory. I implement a rather minimalist strategy compared to some people, but the important thing to keep in mind is that it's still a strategy, it's very intentional, and I take it seriously. Because it's very personalized, I'm actually not quite sure that my strategy would work for everyone. Therefore, in this video, I'm not giving you advice and telling you how you should deal with ticks. I'm simply answering a common question that I receive, and I'm telling you how I deal with ticks, specifically deer ticks, because those seem to be the most common ticks where I live here in Western Pennsylvania. To simplify matters, I'm going to break down my strategy into six major components. Awareness, maneuvering, clothing, inspection, removal, and diet. Before we dig into each component, I want to mention a few things that I don't do. So I don't use any repellents like DEET or permethrin. Now I understand that many people love permethrin and swear by it. And I think it's very good. I still don't use it. I don't duct tape my socks around my pants, and I don't throw my clothes in the dryer immediately upon returning home, simply because I don't have a dryer at home. But if I did have a dryer, I would probably use it. So if I don't do any of those things, then what do I do to deal with ticks? Well, let's start with awareness. I'm starting with awareness because it's such a basic component of my strategy. And what I'm about to say might seem too simple and too obvious, but it's for that very reason that awareness makes the list. I am aware that ticks exist. I am aware that ticks thrive in Pennsylvania. I am aware that ticks are active every single month of the year in Pennsylvania. I am aware that anytime I'm in a field, in the woods, in a backyard, in some kind of natural setting, ticks could be very active. Ticks could make their way onto my body, and ticks could bite me. Now, of course, ticks are more active during certain times of the year, and they are less active during other times of the year. Early spring, when the ephemeral wildflowers are blossoming, and the morels are appearing, deer ticks are quite active in my neck of the woods. Late January, when several inches of snow have been on the forest floor and temperatures have been below freezing for many weeks, deer ticks are less active. Here's the thing though, no matter the weather, no matter the time of the year, I still head into the woods as if a tick could find its way onto my body. It really doesn't take any extra work to maintain this awareness. It's simply a shift in mindset. What I've seen over the years is that many people get bit by ticks because they don't expect to get bit by ticks. A person may be sitting on a park bench somewhere or lounging in their backyard and have zero awareness that ticks could be active. Because this person has zero awareness, a tick finds its way onto the person's body, it bites them, and it stays embedded in their body for quite a long time. So simply understanding that ticks are members of my ecosystem and that they could be very active even when I wouldn't expect them to be active is a very important and fundamental part of my strategy. Next, let's discuss maneuvering or how I make my way through wilder habitats. Notice that I'm not using the word moving, even though it seemingly describes the same thing. I'm using the word maneuvering because it implies skillful movement rather than unintentional, unconscious movement. This concept goes hand in hand with the first concept. I'm aware that I'm much more likely to encounter a tick if I dig through the leaf litter or if I brush up against a certain shrub, tall grass, or an herbaceous stalk. If I'm walking in the middle of a wide trail, I know that a tick is much less likely to latch onto my pants or my shirt. If I can stay on a trail and avoid brushing up against shrubs, tall grasses, or dried flowering stalks, I will do that. But that's not always feasible, nor is it always fun. And on almost every occasion when I'm out in a wilder habitat, I do leave the main trail, I bushwhack, I follow deer trails, and I generally get into some pretty thick stuff. When I do get into these thicker situations, I still try my best not to brush up against too many things that would harbor ticks, and I do still try to maneuver very skillfully even through thick stuff. 
it takes time, it takes a lot of effort, and you end up using some muscles that you didn't even know that you had, but it is very possible to maneuver skillfully through thick stuff. Perhaps more importantly though, is that when I do end up in these thicker situations, I'm fully conscious that my tick exposure level is increasing, and I take additional steps to reduce getting bit. In a few moments, I'll discuss some of these additional steps. Let's now discuss clothing. One part of my strategy is to wear lighter colored pants. So my favorite pair of pants to wear when I'm out in the woods is this pair right here, and as you can see, they're light gray in color. Sometimes I'll wear pants that are light brown. Now, I've noticed over the years that ticks usually, or almost always, show up on my body somewhere below my waist, and they crawl up my body from there. Because deer ticks are very dark in color, they're easy to see on pants that are light gray. Now, I'll be honest with you, a lot of my shirts tend to be darker in color, and I'm okay with that because, as I said before, ticks usually latch onto my body below my waist, somewhere on my pants. If I can get them off early, I don't have to worry about them crawling higher up my body. Now, in the summer season, when it's very hot and very humid, I will wear shorts in the woods, even in habitats that harbor a lot of ticks. And in these situations, I will take additional steps to reduce getting bit by ticks. In a few seconds, I'll discuss these additional steps. Let's move on to inspection, which along with diet must be starred because I feel that these two components are often overlooked and not given enough attention despite their effectiveness. Inspection simply means looking over my body in a disciplined manner and determining whether or not a tick is on my body and whether or not a tick is embedded in my body. If I'm walking in the middle of a trail or in open woods, I don't feel the need to check my body too often. When I brush up against something, I am much more likely to briefly look down to see if a tick is crawling on me. I don't usually stop to do this. I continue walking and I simply look down for a few seconds while walking. Now, if I walk through thick stuff because there's no other way for me to get from here to there, I'll maneuver as best I can through the thick stuff and then I'll usually stop when I get out of it and briefly inspect my clothing and any exposed limbs. Now, inspection doesn't stop there though. When I get home, I inspect my body extremely thoroughly. Full body mirror, no clothes. I'm checking every square inch of my body. And in peak tick season, I also employ the assistance of my girlfriend who checks my body up and down and all around, usually when I get home, but almost always before we go to bed at night. And she's checking me with a flashlight to make sure that there's not a single tick embedded in my body. Now, I cannot stress how important this is. And honestly, if I didn't have her to inspect me in this way, I would strongly consider having a good friend do it because it really is that important. Now, obviously, in late January, lots of snow on the ground, freezing temperatures, I'm not really spending much time checking my body. I'll still briefly look it over, but not too thoroughly. But in peak tick season, I'm checking multiple times per day, in the field, and at home. And my girlfriend is checking me sometimes two or three times per day at home. It's really not as challenging nor as time consuming as it sounds because during the summer season around the house, I'm not wearing a lot of clothes to begin with. No shirt, no socks, usually just a pair of shorts. So I'm casually looking at my body periodically throughout the day and either I or my girlfriend will notice if something seems different. So over the years, I've learned to become very comfortable with my body. I've learned every scar, every blemish, every birthmark, and I've made it a priority to find every tick before it bites me. Now that doesn't always happen, obviously. And if a tick is embedded in my body, I want to reduce the amount of time that it has been feasting on my blood. To reduce the amount of time that it has been feasting on my blood, I diligently check my body more than once. This is absolutely essential, particularly in peak tick season. Speaking of embedded ticks, Let's discuss removal. I've seen all kinds of tick removal devices over the years. I've used several of them, and I've found that a pair of standard tweezers works perfectly for me. So these are the tweezers that I use, and I currently store them in my backpack. They only leave my backpack when I need to use them, or in this case, when I need to talk about them on camera. Otherwise, they stay in my backpack, and they're ready to be used when necessary. They effectively remove adult deer ticks and also the nymphs. And lastly, let's discuss diet, something that people rarely, if ever, mention when discussing ticks. 
and in my opinion, this is a big mistake. I truly feel that a healthy body is much more likely than an unhealthy body to ward off illness associated with a tick bite. Now, I'm not saying that a healthy body will be able to naturally repel ticks, though maybe it could, but I do believe that symptoms of a tick-borne illness can be worsened by poor dietary choices. Now, people naturally wonder, what diet do I recommend? Well, I'm not recommending any diet to you without knowing who you are. But what I personally eat, very broadly speaking, is an intentional anti-inflammatory diet. Now, I could spend an entire video and probably an entire series of videos discussing this topic. But for brevity's sake, I'll just mention three major components that constitute my diet. Number one, I limit sugar consumption. Number two, I am very careful to balance my omega-6 to omega-3 fatty acid intake. Number three, and this is something that I rarely see anyone talk about, I make sure I consume adequate amounts of preformed vitamin A. Not pro-vitamin A, like beta-carotene and other carotenoids, but preformed vitamin A. And I do this through food and not through supplementation. Yes, there are risks associated with too much preformed vitamin A consumption, but the body does need some of it in order to function optimally. People then ask me, do I eat this way before or after I get bit by a tick? And I respond, before tick bite, eat anti-inflammatory diet. After tick bite, eat anti-inflammatory diet. In other words, this is just how I eat on a regular basis. Now, what I'm about to say might seem really strange to a lot of people, but I'm gonna say it anyway, and I'm very serious with what I'm about to say. I've come to realize over the years that a tick is one of my greatest nutrition teachers, and that it's a constant reminder of what I must eat in order to maintain robust health doing something that I absolutely love, spending time with the land and engaging intimately with the land. If I make careless errors with my diet, that's my fault, and a tick will surely let me know. Now, some people think this way of eating is too restrictive, and I know that this is actually how I was meant to eat. Now, just because ticks guide my nutritional choices to some degree, I'm not saying that ticks and I are best friends. I'm not saying I want them around. I'm not saying I really enjoy having them in my life. But while I wouldn't really consider them to be adversaries either, I do think that something Benjamin Franklin said many years ago applies to our discussion. Love your enemies, he said, for they tell you your faults. How aware are you as you engage with the land? How aware are you of your diet? How aware are you of your bodily health? Do you think you are invincible? Wouldn't it be something if a tick could help us answer those questions. So in conclusion, these are the six major components of my strategy. Awareness, maneuvering, clothing, inspection, removal, and diet. Again, this is just what I do, not necessarily what I think you should do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. If you enjoyed it, and if you're not subscribed to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel, I encourage you to subscribe to the Learn Your Land YouTube channel. You can also head on over to learnyourland.com and sign up for the email newsletter so that we could stay in touch. And if you are on social media, feel free to give Learn Your Land a follow on Instagram and on Facebook. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.